What's going on, guys, and welcome to Rabbit's Used Cars. Sorry, I hate, hate shooting these kind of videos. It's just hard for me to even get in the groove. We done shot two earlier, and then it's just like, ugh, dreading this one. Hate it. I've got a quality that sometimes is a flaw, and I'll explain to you why. But I've got a quality that, that really, really is, is, a, is, a, is a blessing and a curse. I see good in people. And I see qualities in people that they have. I see skill sets. I see things in people. You know, it's just like cars. I see a clapped out OBS truck. And, you know, I'm like, you hit that thing with a buffer and put some big wheels and drop it on its nuts. It's going to be cool. Everybody wants it then. I'm the same way with people, though. I see the good in them. I see the good bones. I see, you know, nobody's perfect. I'm not perfect. That quality that you see in people, that, that trait that I have, that I see that in people, is a good thing because I'm not saying I'm a motivator, but I got a way of light a fire, lighting a fire under people's ass. I got a way of digging that good out of them. I've got friends that are good at so many things. I got buddies that are good at sales. And that's why I love talking. Like guys come up to me and they want to talk to you about sales, you know, and, and you can see that little fire in their eye, you know, just that little twinkle, you can just see it, you know, that little, I can spot it from a mile away. I can tell if you got it or not in 30 seconds. And I love it, but it's also a curse when you see people throw that away. And it really bothers me. And this has been a very, very up year in so many ways. For, for so many, not just me, for everyone. I mean, it's, it's been a horrible year. Um, you know, my dad passed over this year. You know, we lost John, you know, our painter, you know, and you know, right before that, you know, we lost Wayne the detailer and my good buddy Tom. And there it comes again, you know, it's just like it's probably one of my good friends since high school, Richard Hoskins, the professor. I heard him on the radio with me. Richard is one of those guys that is the straightest suit type you've ever met in your life. And the stories that I can't tell you won't hear about me and Richard, and if you can. And, and and Richard's that guy. Everybody loves him that meets him. He's funny. He's got just that personality. You know, he did sales for years. He got into banking. He was extremely good at banking. He's a very smart guy, just quick. Numbers. Always had that line, had that real dry sense of humor. I mean, this guy literally looked like someone that's going to do your taxes, but could, like, cut you to the bone, just like that. I love that wit. I love that sense of humor about him and, and knowledgeable. I mean, he was a car guy from way back. And not like, he lo I like cool cars. I work at the bank. He knew how to build a motor in one. He knew what it took. He knew how they worked. And he remembered things about cars. And he could just recall things about cars. And he researched and researched. I'd buy a new car and hell, he'd tell me more about it than I did and I owned the damn thing. You know, and me and him shared the love of C4 Corvettes. You know, and you know, actually sold it. Richard, something about Richard, he's missing his left arm. And um, actually sold a one-armed man, a six-speed Corvette, and that was Richard. Uh, silver 96 Collector's Edition that I bought out of Hawaii. Richard was that guy though that you just instantly were drawn to that magnetism, just you're just, you're naturally, he was always gonna be the one telling a funny joke or a funny story about something. And Richard was, you know, single guy, touch with ladies man, you know, always had the cool ride, you know, and uh, a funny story I can tell you, I'm still gonna have to leave some details out, but it's funny and it's pretty much YouTube friendly. Um, we were hosting an event in Tennessee, it was an all Mustang show and, um, they wanted me to do the announcing for a drag race that they were going to have. 
you know, like a little extra event outside of this event. We're up in Tennessee. I don't even remember the name of the track. It's a little hole in the wall track, Tennessee. And we're sitting up there. And, and you know, it, it was a cloudy day. Not a lot of people showed up. You know, a double handful. You know, we're standing there. And Kobe's there. And, you know, we're just grabbing a mic, getting them riled up a little bit. And Richard drove a Cadillac ATS. And it had been, it, it was, it was, virtually a new car and it already had exhaust and it had a tune and a few other things done to it and you know i mean a little two liter turbos i mean they're they're pretty peppy you know and and we got it joking around and keep in mind richard you got this one-armed guy that's wearing his wells fargo polo shirt and you know his starch slacks with his belt and he's just mr neat you know he's always wore dress shoes always dressed to kill usually and i think i've only seen him in tennis shoes probably three times in my life just that guy he just you're either going to sell you a vacuum, audit you, or open up a checking account. He's just that guy. You know, wore glasses, the comb over, you know, kind of slender. Kind of looked like Kip from Napoleon Dynamite a little bit. And, uh, but he hated that. We kind of did a whole white men can't jump scenario with all these Ford guys. Because I knew what the little Cadillac would do. And I sure as hell know what a junky ass five liter Mustang will do. And there's a guy there, and we kind of got him riled up a little bit. And I said, I got a $100 bill. It says, you can't outrun my guy right here in his mom's Cadillac. Stock wheels. The only thing gave away, tips were a little big on the back. Car wasn't even that loud. But, I mean, other than that, it was just a black Cadillac. Oh, man, whatever, whatever. You know, I got a big 303 cam. Whatever. $100. Take it from me. Lines them up. Not only did Richard outrun him, Richard ran the fastest time of the day and cut the best light of the day, the very first time out. And then the track official comes up to him and says, can you cut your air off going down the track? It's dripping water on the track. This guy was a little huffy. So he pulls back around. He goes, man, you know, I'm spinning. I was spared in you. I said, well, I'll tell you what, $100, let's do it again. Richard turns his air off this time. Well, it ain't a dom, it's a Cadillac. Beep, button. Pulls back around again. Mustang pulls up. He did him a long, smoky burn out. Richard drove around the water box, just pulls up. And this guy did a burnout. And, ah! and he's going through the gears with him, backs up. They stage him up. Literally, Richard's nickname for the rest of the weekend was the Lumberjack because he could chop that f***ing tree down, cut another perfect light, and ran a tenth faster than he did the time before. So he also had the lowest time again and outrun the shit out of this Mustang even worse. The Mustang actually was a tenth slower than it was the first time. Well, his buddy had a 99 Cobra. And I don't know if you've ever been around 99 Cobra. There ain't much of them either. And uh, he pulled around. He goes, I'd like to get a little piece of that. And I said, buddy, I'll cut you a deal. I'll do you the same price, 100 bucks. Hell yeah, I got this. I told Richard, I said, you know that Cobra Supercharged? And Richard said, it's fine. I mean, it's just cool. You know, he's, I mean, literally, and Richard never gets out of the car. He just pulls around, and I just pull him right back in the same lane again. And the guy said, well, I want to switch lanes. Richard backs up, switches lane. We give him Richard's lane. Whatever you want, darling. Lights cut down. Richard busts his ass. So we do this two more times with the Cobra. Hundred dollars a time. And if you're keeping track, you know, we'd have made some pretty good dinner money at this point. And Richard just not laughing, not cutting up, not saying a word. It was kind of funny. The guy with the Cobra came back around again to pay me. And uh, Richard's leaning against his car, you know, playing on his phone. And you're not saying a word, nothing, you know, me, you know, I talk for everybody, you know, and I told him, he goes, he goes, man, what's that guy got done to that thing? I said, oh, no, I, said, I think he's texting your old lady now, you know, just talking trash. He just gives me money, whatever. My phone starts ringing. And it's actually the guy's putting on the race. He said, um, could you tell your buddy to quit outrunning everybody in the Cadillac? My bad. But we did have some, we made some good dinner money. We were all eating steak that night in Tennessee. But Richard was that guy that was sharp. Richard liked to drink a little bit, and he had some health problems. He had a lot of things going on. He started deteriorating. He had, started having some serious health problems, and to the point, you know, when COVID hit and we quit doing the radio show, 
And I mean, it actually worked out fine because I, I didn't have time to do it. I enjoyed doing the radio show with Richard. It was fun to catch up. That was the 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 the, the funnest three hours of my week, hands down, usually, because we laughed and cut up. You guys just heard the highlight reel. The things that were said off mic were absolutely epic. You know, that was the thing about Richard. You know, he was very well spoken, but he could hang he could he could hang with the best of them, drinking or talking shit. So we knew his health was declining a little bit, and he was getting progressively worse. But you know, you're always thinking optimistic you know he's gonna pull out and that was the thing you know it, it's been like this you know he, he'd kind of go down he popped back up a little bit you know and he'd like come by here whatever you know he lost a little weight but you know he's getting around he's doing okay you know and, and all that and then we get that phone call that he's not doing good again and, you know and i hate it I, I do because i mean i've known him for so long I mean, i've known richard for 20 something years now yeah, you know, we did car shows together. We've done, you know, the podcast radio show. I mean, hell, we sold cars together. We've done all this stuff over the years together. We went to Indy, and we flew out Thursday evening, and my phone was blowing up first thing Friday morning. And it was my friend called me and told me that Richard passed. He died 2.20 in the morning. Friday morning. And at first, you know, it's like, you know, it, it don't, it doesn't sink in. And, 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 you know, it's just a shock to you, you know, because this guy that you've done all these things with, and I mean, we're not talking about an old guy. And I know we're getting older, you know, I, I know I'm getting older. I understand that. But I, the problem I have wrapping my mind around it is, is I knew how he lived his life. I knew how I lived mine, which I'm not exactly the, you know, the poster child for that either. But he's 43 years old. He's 43 years old. He's gone. You know, I've seen Richard car crashes. I mean, I've seen Richard in wrecks that should, he's been in more car wrecks that would kill normal people. He walks away from them. Richard's that guy always had a horseshoe in his ass, up his ass. He could, he'd come out smell like a rose every time. It really, really hit me hard on the flight home. You know, PRI was just a, a, a friggin' insane time, day and night. But I was on the flight home, and uh, you know, it's, it's, it really sucks. It just sucks, you know. I mean, because you, know, you make, you make a lot of acquaintances. You make a lot of buddies but when you really think about it you know my dad used to say this all the time i'd rather have four quarters than a hundred pennies and you still gonna have a lot of pennies in your life you're gonna have all those good time buddies or oh yeah we parted that time or he'll call you on your birthday or something but that guy that is there with you think of that those 20 year plus friends those guys are far and few and I lost one, and that really bothers me. You know, I mean, I'm his funeral Saturday, and I'm dreading. I'd rather take an ass beating than do this because I'm going to have to be a pallbearer and place my buddy in his final resting place, and that's just not cool at all. Really, not a moral of the story. You guys are kind of like my therapy. I just talked to you, so yeah, you're welcome. You know what? If you got a good friend. Tell me you love them. Tell me you're thinking about them. Check in on them every once in a while. Guys, we'll catch you next time. Richard, I got you a ride for the weekend, and I know you can get anywhere you want to go with this and pick up the ladies, because this is very thin, brother. Well, I know it's got some torque. Yeah. It's a lot better than that Jaguar. Hop on in. I'll, All right, hold on. I'll let's show let's you. redo that again, because yeah. you're not in frame. Oh. Good outtake though. All right. Yeah. Hey Richard, I got you a ride for the weekend. I know you can pick up the ladies better with this than you can that. Will this thing do a wheel stand? Oh, it definitely will. It's got wheelie bars, brother. Awesome. Right off into the sunset and pick up some women. Oh, we can want to turn it over. <laughs>
done with this thing. I should have started speed. Up. I told you, you can't handle speed. French can't handle the ride. Oh, it's got too much torque.